So there's this article that was shared by Reckless Trucker in my Discord server, posted by Medium.com, saying Jessica Yaniv is most likely just yet another alt-right troll. And I thought, hmm, interesting read. And, and if this really is the truth, well then, would that mean that Jessica Yaniv or Jonathan Yaniv is just a poser, is literally a transgender? A fraudulent trans person, a complete and utter fake tranny, or or, or a elaborate Poe. Yeah, because if Yaniv is just pretending to be trans, the reason why I want to read this article is if Yaniv is pr really pretending to be trans, well then this kind of goes to show some of the beef that I have, some of the issues that I have when it comes to transgender issues. Now, let me just uh, emphasize here, people. I don't think that transgenderism is completely invalid. I do think that there are some legit cases of people transitioning and possibly maybe even needing to take the luxury of um, transitioning, uh, tra transitioning genders, I mean. I mean, if you're literally like biologically a mixed sex, like for example, you're a female but you have testes, which I think testes is like one of the uh, one of the reproductive organs of males. I mean, if uh, you have a female that has, or born female that has male organs, or born male that has female organs, well then, there is an argument to be there that they could and probably even should transition. But on the other hand, on the flip side of this, people li literally can just claim <laughs> to be whatever gender that they want, according to... Uh, some far left and social justice warrior types, you know. Cool, I can be a cyborg. Cool, I can transition to a cyborg now, or or, com or computer algorithm. Yeah, or uh, or more realistically speaking, a person can just a dude can just claim to be a female and just go into the uh, women's restroom and be a complete and utter creeper when really outside of his, uh, in his regular life, he claims, in his regular day-to-day -day life, he claims to be a dude, but he just claims to be a female just momentarily, just to be in the female restroom and so forth. I mean, that might be getting a little bit overly pessimistic, but it still, like, puts up kind of a bad precedent, and this is, like, an example of that bad precedent. Jonathan Yaniv, and yes, I am going to be referring, I am going to be misgendering, uh, misgendering, quote-unquote, Yaniv, because I do not give a shit about this piece of shit, because this earlier article that I had read, reread just now and read a few weeks ago, apparently Jonathan Yaniv is a very likely pedophile. The evidence is mostly from the post-millennial and other sites that seemingly have just a natural, uh, animosity against, uh, trans people in general, but um, I don't really care for the bias that these articles have. I mean, as this article, this writer from Medium.com has pointed out, they have some big-time problems with Post Millennial and other websites that they pointed out, saying that they have a bit of a far-right bias or whatever. But I don't really care about the bias. What I really care about are the freaking uh, screen caps that are taken of Yaniv having conversations with this girl anyways. And the little audio clip uh, right here. I'm on love, the fuck. I'm on love. I'm on love for Dicky. I'm on love for Sissy. I'm on love for Pussy. I love you too, Jess Wampa. I love you. You go big go up in you. Up in you. Up in you. Up in down you. Take on me your mom. <laughs> Utter piece of shit, people. He's disgusting. That pool party he tried to have was a fucking trap for kids, says Nick Colfish. Yeah, apparently that's another thing that I've heard about. And I, I just want to say that it's not just far-right people that are speaking out against uh, Jonathan Yaniv. Apparently, even Mr. Repsion. Mr. Repsion isn't even, like, really right-leaning. I think he's more of a centrist-type guy. I don't know his full politics, but uh, 
I think Re- Repsion, I'm pretty sure anyways, that he's more center, if not center left, or something like that. Even he has to speak out against Jonathan Yanov, expose of how much of a piece of shit he is for trying to exploit the whole transgender identity for his own agenda, and in order to, like, claim victim points and get away with, uh, get away with murder. Or, <laughs> in this case, get away with fucking pedophilia. Like, how dare we speak out against, uh, this pedophile, I mean, they're, they're trans for crying out loud. Cut him a break, or whatever. I don't know. That might be a slight straw man right there, but still, I can, I can only imagine that I'm going to get a whole lot of shit for uh, misgender, misgendering, quote-unquote, Mr. Yanov. People are going to uh, start moral fagging over the fact that I dare uh, mispronoun Mr. Yanov. Instead and uh, just in, instead of focusing on the real substantive issue of how much of a exploitative and predatory piece of shit that Yanov is, and apparently Medium.com kind of sympathizes, not in the same way that I do. I mean, they don't have the exact uh, well. Medium.com is like an open article for people all over the political spectrum to post on. But I digress. This particular left-leaning article, anyways. This particular left-leaning writer. And I have, like, read the article at least once before. But I had to, uh, like, give this another read. Just to, like, get my thinking cap straight. So I've read the article once before. And this guy is a leftist. And even he has to, like, call out of how much of a poser, how much of a likely fraud that Jessica, well, or Jonathan, rather, fucking is. He doesn't go to so much misgender him, but... I honestly don't care if somebody is going to uh, refer to Yaniv as her and she or whatever. There is a slight possibility that this stream might get taken down or whatever. And uh, but fuck it, we're we're gonna like go full balls of the wall here, people, of reaming against uh, Mister Yaniv. But back on Mister Repsion, even Mister Mister Repsion goes misgendering, quote unquote, Yaniv. I'm pretty sure that he is pro-trans rights. One of the weirdest stories over the last few months is about Jessica Yaniv. <coughs> Jonathan Yaniv. If you've not heard of who she is, you know, I'm just going to read verbatim the article. You're probably not the first, and that's for a good reason. Right now, Yaniv, who is presumed to be a trans rights advocate, at least self-professedly, is engaging in all manners of unwieldy, uh, unwieldy behavior, and it's starting to put into question whether her reputation has much to account for. This movement of skepticism surrounding Yaniv has been led by the trans uh, community's most progressive bloc, and it all came after alt-right personality Blair Lott White. Okay. I gotta say, that's fucking bullshit. Like, as flawed as Blair White is, as far-ish right that uh, Blair White might be, I highly doubt that she's alt-right. Like, show me the evidence. Show me the receipts of how that Blair White is alt-right. Is she actually for a white ethnostate? If not, I'm gonna call bullshit on her supposedly being alt-right. And not to mention also the fact that alt-righters... Um, a good portion of them, anyway, are against uh, trans rights, who often tokenizes her trans experience to deny other trans people the courtesy of being (sighs) well-treated. What do you mean by being well-treated? Are you you talking about just rolling over for trans people on uh, literally all their demands or whatever? Are you talking about, like, just rolling over for Riley J. Dennis' demands of how we must all be open to the possibility of liking a trans dick. Because that's the case, well then, <laughs> I'm just going to dismiss your word right there. Blair White, as far as I know, does not actually promote the harassment of trans people just for being trans people. I mean, whether or not she might promote the harassment or what, or invoke the harassment of certain trans people, that's a different story, and I do not know or... or I do not know about that. But as far as I know, she does not advocate for the uh, harassment of trans people just because they're trans people or whatever. She's pro-trans rights and she's not really for trans harassment. So 
I don't know. Get 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 fucked. Put her on blast in a YouTube video decrying self ID laws and positing the theory that trans people would only exploit them for malicious use. Watch, you know, I'm I'm gonna have to link uh, Mr. Rebsion's video down below. I, I I'm gonna have to link Mr. Rebsion's video down below to show this, but watch Mr. Rebsion's video about Jonathan Yanov. It's titled "The Jonathan Yanov Files." Of uh, how he's pointing out that, yeah, Yaniv is damn well exploiting <laughs> his own victim points, his own self proclaimed identity, and the trans identity just to get his way. And in this case, it's a balls waxing, apparently, and amongst other shit. Hello, loudmouth, how are you doing? Hello. We're reading about Jonathan Yaniv. Ah, uh, that bastard. Yeah. I are we still investigating my uh, theory about him? <laughs> um, what theory? Remind me again. <laughs> You're, uh, there's a joke I made a while back. Remember when I said that he was actually uh, no bullshit in drag? But, uh... Oh! <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought it would just be a running joke, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, well, sorry. I, I, mean, I forgot about that. Well... Well, let's be honest. Has anyone ever seen both of them in the same place at the same time? Eh? 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 <laughs> um, Miff Colfish says, uh, no, she's not alt-right either, referring to Blair White. Yeah, I don't think so. These uh, lefties that keep on... Blair White is not alt-right. Give me a fucking Yeah, break. exactly. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, these lefties that are calling her alt-right need to provide the receipts on that. Uh, for context, Blair White's inquiry was predicated on three distinct stories. The first was Yaniv looking to host an all um, an all body LGBT plus public pool party in Langley, British Columbia, and Canada. Okay, this is the story right here that uh, that Miff Cuttlefish was referring earlier in the chat. This is where that I heard it from. The second was a detailed account of online interactions with a minor, alleging Yaniv had basically indulged in child predation. Um, I think How's it's pretty much this bastard not in prison? Is what I'm wondering. What? How the fuck is this bastard not in prison? Because, uh... Because... <laughs> because trans people are the victims. That's why. Uh, this... I mean... Basically, like, I would think most trans people would really want uh, Yanif arrested just to say we're not anything like this, uh, this creep. Mm. I think, and I think most do. I, I, I think, generally speaking, but people have, like, different angles of coming from it. I mean, um... But anyway, and the third, which perhaps got most of the attention, is a full-blown controversy where Yanif filed human rights violation suits against spas denying her bikini wax services on the basis of transphobia. As appealing as taking this information uh, information on face value might be, it must be laced with a grain of salt. All right. Well, that, that should be like uh, most uh, news stories, but I digress. The only outlets to have circulated these stories have a poor record of journalistic rigor. The Post Millennial, The Sun, and The Daily Caller aren't exactly known for facticity. Okay. Post Millennial... I don't know much about so and the sun I don't uh, I vaguely heard the name and the daily as opposed to CNN and the Washington Post who are totally credible when they're not dealing out big uh, settlements for the slander they constantly publish yeah exactly um, and as far as daily caller goes I don't have any real reason to like completely distrust daily caller I mean I know that they have kind of a right-leaning bias and uh, there was like a point of which that they um they did kind of f up on Twitter, but they kind of uh, they kind of made amends to that. I can't even remember what exactly it was. I think it was something about uh, Cortez's nudes being shared on Twitter or something. And then they were just like trying to give some warning that hey, these are only photoshopped. But then they kind of retracted that story because even if the nudes were fake, it's still kind of disrespectful towards AOC. But anyway. I think that was what the story was anyways, but I could be wrong. Um, and 
well, like I said earlier, people, I don't know about the post-millennial, and I do not care about how far right post-millennial might be. What I care about is the raw evidence that was provided of the screen caps and the video that is shared in this video, or this article right here. Um, quite the opposite. But the central issue isn't that right-wing outlets have a vested interest in portraying trans people negatively. Well, not all right-wing outlets are completely outright anti-trans rights against allowing trans people to get their transition uh, uh, procedures and whatnot. So that's a little bit of a gross overgeneralization. But anyway, I digress. Far from it. It is the fact that the only parties to corroborate Yanev's antics are either Yanev herself or sources so far off from mainstream access that it makes the proliferation of these stories all in the span of July's latter weeks rather questionable. I mean... If the suspect admits of their own crimes, I mean, due process is no longer needed. <laughs> yeah. Or admits of their actions, anyways. N not necessarily. Basically, that person's argument there was essentially just people we don't like have reported on this story, therefore you should discount it. A whole. I cannot. Well, I guess I can believe it from these fucking jokers, but that is their actual argument right there. Hmm. Um. Person, person I don't like says the sky is blue, therefore it's green. Cat Black's video is a great resource on the topic because it provides all the necessary context for why calling out Jessica Yanev's rise into the alt-right's consciousness is an imperative to make sure she doesn't hijack the conversation surrounding trans acceptance. I mean, I kind of agree there, but if uh, it is proven that Yanev is basically a complete and utter fraud, it serves as evidence that really... Uh, anybody can just claim to be a, a trans person and that the trans identity can be exploited in the s same way like you're inadvertently admitting it yourself Mr. Lefty writer A. Khaled uh, yeah A. Khaled is his name or call it every pronounce that in the same way, the alt-right uses the language of community-wide culpability for the actions of a minority in the case of Muslims. I mean, yeah, I kind of agree the alt-right speak in overly collectivist terms, but anyways. Yanev's behavior is unrepresentative of the formed moral consensus within the trans community. Mm. Um, as illustrated by ample amounts of research... The idea that certain subsections of the LGBT plus community have an inherent pro uh, propension to prey on children isn't exactly new. I mean, I... <laughs> uh, is anyone actually making that argument when it comes to Yanif? Uh, the... Mostly people are just saying that Yanif is doing these things. That that doesn't say anything about the wider trans community or LGBT community or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 want, I just uh, wonder, out of curiosity, these people that are speaking in this exact language of this article right here, have they, like, seen uh, Mr. Repsion's video against Yanev? I mean, Repsion isn't exactly an anti-trans bigot himself, and yet he is speaking you're, out against You expect Yanev. these fuckers to do any research, really? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe not. Um they never, they never do research. All right? You ever, you get into a debate with a leftist, you, uh, you, you can basically present uh, a research or link to like a peer-reviewed paper, and they'll respond by pelting you with that hominem because it's all they're capable of. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to bet this person wrote this article without doing fuck all research. And I, I well, aside from uh, looking at videos that are basically confirmation bias, like Cat Blacks, I will not deny that there are like some right wingers, far right wingers, that uh, go like talking in collectivist terms, using Yaniv and other shitty trans quote unquote people to um to portray the entire trans community as being shitty and saying this is why that we should ban trans procedures. But that is not the vast majority of people that are speaking out against the NF. Good portion of alt writers uh, either don't uh, really care that much about whether or not the government allows trans procedures to be practiced, or they are outright for allowing trans procedures to happen, that being their libertarian principles speaking, but at the same time, speak out against the NF and expose him for the piece of shit he is. 
It's been pushed by the conservative movement in America and across the world since discussion of granting them further rights uh, became more prevalent, and its propagation as everything with conservative electoral sway, rather than any shred of reality. Here's the problem, though. The Republican voting base is becoming increasingly more accepting of uh, homosexuality. And I do realize I said homosexuality, not trans people, but I, uh, I would kind of think that that would kind of translate into being more accepting of people getting their transitions, you know? The weaponization of bigoted stereotypes isn't the beginning nor the end of it all, however. After guesting on a follow-up Blair White stream where she was supposed to defend her, Yanov got raided for illegal ownership of a taser, uh, something only law enforcement is allowed in Canada. And I will say, I will argue for Yanov that uh, that is bullshit, like, um... As much of a piece of shit Yanov is in so many other ways, I don't think he should be arrested for illegal ownership of tasers or any other kind of weaponry. And most recently, Yanov was caught using racist language when she took a selfie next to a sick preceded by the message, sitting right next to a turban fucker. Uh, I'm sorry. When I originally read that, when I first read this article, I kind of thought that it was just a l little bit funny, but just mildly. Uh, seasoned trans writer Cursed E mentioned earlier this month that Yaniv has a passive of xenophobia, denoting that the pattern of it and the statements she's made about immigrants before do look like she's just a racist on a power trip. This and other similarly mind-boggling events caught, uh, crossed Yaniv over from provocateur land well into the uncharted plains of lunacy. Well, uh, no shit, she is, uh, or he is an absolute lunatic. Oh yeah, that, that, guy, that guy's fucking nuts. Like, that person needs to be in jail. I, I believe recently he assaulted a reporter. Uh, actually, I do recall, like, uh, Mr. Repsion's video on Yaniv where he was, like, showing video of Yaniv basically blocking the reporter from escaping the apartment complex or whatever the heck that piece of land was. Like, they originally were telling him to get off the area, then they suddenly decided to block him. Like, uh, cognitive dissonance much, dude? Oh, that's intentional. It was, it was, it was while attacking and bullying somebody else and committing a crime against them, he was trying to make uh, himself to be the victim. Hmm. Uh, the, that's, uh, this creeps them up. Reckless Trucker says there isn't a trans community. The only thing that connects them is a dongle of issues. <laughs> of issues, I think is what, what he meant Well, yeah, but, I mean, people with uh, gender dysphoria, they have, um, uh, they have a lot of extra struggles in life, and I assume they, they talk with one another to, uh, with someone who can relate to their issues, I suppose, right? Hmm. I, so and, so that, that could be a community, right? Yeah, well, uh, I don't I not know whether it actually officially should be considered as a community. I mean, one could make an argument that perhaps uh, we loose, should not be divided loosely. into communities. Loosely but still. it would be. Yeah. Sorry, what, Loudmouth? Said loosely it would be. Yeah. Um, and Myth Cuttlefish says uh, cry bully. Yep, that's exactly what Yanov was. Cry bullying, yeah, that's... That, that's this creeps MO. Um, she's become the perfect parody for transphobes and trans exclusionary radical feminists to fawn over as a great example of PC culture run amok. I mean, well, yeah, pretty much like Jessica Yanif is pretty is like every negative stereotype about trans people like personified. Like you could take every uh, every single one of them and put them in a blender, and that's what would pop out. I mean, if your rhetoric, uh, lefties, is that all people should be accepted as trans people, no questions asked. Well, then, sorry, but yeah, Yaniv is an example of PC culture run amok. Yeah, sorry, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> the protections that uh, they want, some bad actors will abuse them. It's inevitable. Like when you, uh, like if you give people a blank check, okay, and just said, write enough money you need. You need to survive, okay? Uh, a few people are going to write down the check more than they need to survive, okay? Mm -hmm. Systems that can easily be abused will be abused. Right. Inevitably. Because human nature. 
Right. Mythcrawlfish says, for them, bad people don't exist unless you're a straight white male. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a kind of ex an expounding of what uh, Loudmouth was saying. Um, yeah, they're psychotic that way. But all that seems to spring up from each and every new incident is a greater indication that the projected cliche of trans people being this ambivalent is just as artificially crafted as Je Jessica Yanev herself. It's clear that Yanev's existence has now become confined by the parameters of being a punching bag for both the left and the right. Ah, so you admit it then. That it ain't just the right that is, like, uh, going against Yanov and pointing out their shitbaggery. His shitbaggery, rather. And not necessarily trying to portray that as, uh, you know, this is, like, this is an example of the trans community right here as a generality. That they're really all just a bunch of exploitative victim whores. But it wouldn't be entirely out of the realm of possibility of Jessica's rise into the, pub into the public scene was deliberate and not as organic, as organic as it's been traditionally pinned. I'll abstain from making any final judgments as to whom her notoriety seeks to benefit most, but it doesn't take much to guess who that party might be. End of article. And what I have to say in conclusion of this, if Yanev really is a fraud, I mean... If Yanev really is a fraud, well then there's only really two things... There's only really two things that lefties can come as... And those two conclusions are, that I forgot to mention, are that either A, alt-writers are not as anti-trans as they think, or B, the trans identity can be exploited as anti-SJWs were trying to warn for the longest time now. People, uh, absolutely no questions asked and no challenge does set a little bit of a bad precedent. But again, I must say that I... Do not say that all, that absolutely all trans people and the entire trans issue is illegitimate. That's my final word. Oh hey, you've made it to the end of the video. If you like what you see in here, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below, please. If you want to see more content like this, this video is actually just a mere clip from a full livestream episode of my political show, Strike Force. Link down below for the full stream. Go check that out, and also subscribe and set the bell notification button to all to keep notified of this channel. I also have a BitChute channel under the same name, The Dark Conservatarian, and a Twitter and subscribe star that may or may not be approved of yet. Links for those two as well in the description box. Hope to see you all later. Good day and God bless.